Now you said you're getting about 40 grams of fiber a day. I'm around 60. 50 60. 60. And that's total soluble and insoluble? Yeah, it's total soluble. And so what are your sources? Where do you get the, the like, what's the main foods that are contributing to that? So uh, I'll do like a, a lot of riced cauliflower. Um, I'll do quite a, you know, broccoli, uh, some beans. I'll also do, uh, I love apples. So that's kind of my go-to fruit source. How many grams of fiber in an apple? Oh, I want to say it's like three or four grams, maybe oh, a little it. bit less than that. Okay. It's not a huge amount, but like if you want something a little bit more packed, you know, like berries, berries tend to be really fiber dense mm. uh, compared to something like apples. Uh, you know, like something like a, ban- like a banana is a fruit, but relatively low fiber, all things considered. Uh, but even like the the higher sugar, lower fiber fruits are still like relatively well associated with good health outcomes. So, and then honestly, like people are going to laugh and be judgmental. I love popcorn. So popcorn actually is pretty darn high fiber. More than corn on the kernel per kernel basis? Uh, I don't know about that. Because I feel but... like you could eat more corn than popcorn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So popcorn is actually very filling. That, that's one reason I, I got into eating it during bodybuilding competitions. Like obviously like um, I would just do like air pop popcorn mm. and I'll usually like put a little bit of cinnamon and Splenda over that. And then like a little bit of like the, the butter spray. I mean, it takes you, you know, for 50 grams of carbohydrate from popcorn, it'll take you like 20, 30 minutes to eat it, you know? So I just found that that like helped me control my hunger. Uh, and in 50 grams of popcorn, you're getting around like six to 10 grams of fiber, depending on the specific you know, brand you're using. So that's actually like, I love that as a snack because it's like, it's, it's, you know, is it as healthy as if I had some fruits and vegetables? Probably not. But you know, as far as a snack goes, it's, you know, pretty good and and very filling. So I do that. And then like just miscellaneous sources throughout the day. Um, But I think one of the things to really look at is, you know, people, I, I was in a debate with Paul Saldino one time and we were talking about fiber and one of the things he said, and he's well, a big carnivore advocate, big carnivore advocate. One of the things he said was, well, you know, this stuff with fiber, is just healthy user bias. People who eat more fiber are, you know, they just have other health promoting behaviors. Now that's a real thing in terms of like cohort studies and cross-sectional data, observational data. It is a real thing. But when you're dealing with something that's kind of a healthy user bias, Typically, you'll see like the data is not consistent, right? Like some one study will say one thing, one study might have no effect, one study might say a different thing. Yep. And that's what like you see that with meat. That's right. Right. Like you see that with meat longevity. I was just looking at some meta-analysis earlier that one meta-analysis even showed that after controlling for confounding variables that actually animal protein was not associated with, with, dec- with increased mortality. Um, but you don't you, see it with exercise. You don't see it with exercise. You don't see it with the smoking studies in the opposite don't see direction. It with, you don't see it with fiber. F- the effect in fiber, at least in terms of like cardiovascular disease, cancer. cancer, it is a very consistent effect. And it's very consistent even across all the meta-analyses I've seen. So do we have a 10-year randomized control trial of giving people you know enough fiber versus not enough fiber and seeing health outcomes? No, and we'll never have that. But do I feel very comfortable saying that I think fiber helps uh, reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer based on the data we have? Oh, yeah. I feel very comfortable saying that. And what's a what's the RDA on fiber? Is it 30 grams? I th- Not that the RDA I th- matters. I'm just kind of curious. I think it's 20 to 30 grams. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. I haven't looked at it in yeah, a while. I, I, know they, I know they changed the guidelines yeah. a while back too. Uh, what I tell people a good target to shoot for is like, 15 grams per thousand calories. I mean, I would love to go more, but at some point it just becomes intractable to get that much fiber at that low calorie. Now, all the things that you mentioned for fiber, you're eating real food to get it. So how do we think about it in terms of bars and things that seem, I've heard different things about this where, you know, if you look at the incretin effect, for example, you know, it would suggest that the fiber that's in a processed bar is not really contributing the way a fiber is in the way you just described it. If you're actually eating cauliflower or beans or things like that. Yeah. So I try not to, 
fall into the naturalistic fallacy, right? And I get I get a little bit cringed when I hear processed, unprocessed, because what we do to food now, everything's processed. Yeah, yeah. Processing in and of itself. Is yeah, processing not, doesn't mean bad. I just right. mean, and I'm really talking about this purely through the lens of the disruption of the actual kernel. For, for sure. And for what sure. that actually does at the GLP-1 level. Yeah. yeah. So getting back to that, yeah, I would say that Mother Nature's Kitchen is probably, you know, better than, you know, a, a fiber bar that's like some indigestible form of glucose or, you know, some less digestible form of, of uh, uh, starchy carbohydrate. But is it better than nothing? Again, it's kind of like, yeah. you know, it's probably better than nothing. But if somebody says, well, I'm getting 40 grams of fiber a day and it's because they're eating like three protein bars that have 14 grams of fiber, I would argue that, well, it's probably not equivalent to, yep. you know, getting six to eight servings of fruits and vegetables.